Next on Worcester News Tonight, the city gets a look at how solar panels will power the city and help Worcester save money. Plus, traveling tomorrow for the holiday? You aren't alone. What to expect on one of the busiest travel days of the year. Good evening. Thank you for joining us. I'm Andy Madison. We begin tonight in Worcester and the city's plan to use solar energy at the former Greenwood Street landfill, a plan which is on schedule to launch next year and aims to help Worcester build a bright future. The plan is for more than 28,000 solar panels spread across 24 acres. We're basically going to be a, an energy supplier to the grid in essence and get a credit toward our energy cost as a city. On a tour of the former Greenwood Street landfill, now being built into a solar farm, the city manager learned the project is about halfway done and on target to be completed next year. Our side's done, but National Grid's got to do their side to, to allow it to be interconnected, and they're expected to finish their work sometime in the spring. And that's when we throw the Frankenstein switch and off we go. Once complete, the array will produce roughly 10 million kilowatts a year, offsetting roughly $2 million of annual cost of electricity to Worcester. Another way the city plans to be more energy efficient is through LED lights. Seen here in the City Hall parking garage, city officials got a look at how the new system would work to dim or repair broken street lights throughout the city. A change meant to bring more color to Worcester and save the city more than $100,000. We'll be able to control them. We'll be able to save a lot of money as well on terms of the more efficient lighting. And they last and last and last. I mean, these lights, we we'll probably won't have to go back out and change these for another 20, 25 years. And the LED street lights start going up next month. They're expected to be completed in September by 2017 all over the city. Well, Thanksgiving's just two days away, which means many will be traveling this week all over New England and all across the country for the holiday. For some, the holiday week was, has already started, allowing them to get a head start on the travel rush. Here's a look at 290 in Worcester this evening. It'll be a much busier scene tomorrow, both on the road, the airport, and train stations, too. The day before Thanksgiving, one of the busiest travel times of the year. Our Brittany Schaefer caught up with some drivers earlier today and has details on what to expect. Today we're headed to uh, my mother's place uh, just above Scranton, Pennsylvania, and um, left early from uh, Kenny Monk. Donna Brent started her Thanksgiving drive Tuesday. By the time she reached the Mass Pike service area in Charlton, she'd already been on the road with thousands of other travelers. Brent has an 11 hour trip and says her key is leaving early and taking breaks. You can leave a little earlier than you plan on a normal day. That would be good and just uh, don't try and set any speed records and uh, traffic isn't too bad. According to AAA, Thanksgiving week is one of the busiest travel holidays of the year. They expect 48.7 million Americans to hit the road for the holiday. We are expecting a lot of company on the roadways. We are actually projecting at AAA that more than a million additional people compared with last year will be traveling. AAA expects the busiest travel days to be Tuesday and Wednesday. Their advice to drivers is to avoid the roads between 3 and 8 p.m. We advise people to try to get an early start to leave before rush hour if possible in the morning. And if you can travel earlier or later, those are the two keys. Thanksgiving morning can also be a great time to travel. As for the travelers out on the road today, many are thankful for the clear weather and looking forward to spending time with family. I was visiting my middle daughter who lives in North Reading, Massachusetts, and we're headed back to uh, Albany, New York to visit my oldest daughter. Just going to have a really excellent dinner and visit with, with our family. They're coming in from all over. Brittany Schaefer, Worcester News Tonight. More travel news today locally where Worcester's commuter rail line is facing backlash after several delays for trains on the Framingham Worcester line. As our Catherine Andrioli shows us, some commuters say getting to and from Boston is turning into a nightmare. Many at Worcester's Union Station opt to commute to Boston by train to avoid driving during rush hour traffic. But some riders say the Framingham Worcester line has not been very convenient and the schedule is often unreliable and unpredictable. We have to wait for a train that is already here to go out before we get in, which means 
I miss my connection to catch a bus to go home. The Framingham Worcester line carries the second most number of daily commuters into Boston each day with roughly 16,000 people using the service. One woman we spoke with who takes the train into Boston five to six days a week says she has not had a good experience and something needs to change. Vanessa Germont is one of the many people who rely on the commuter rail to get into work each morning. She says lately her trains have been running late and seats are hard to find. I'm a woman that's disabled with a child and I have to sometimes stand up on the train until I get to a further stop before I can find a seat. Keolis, who runs the commuter rail, met with the MassDOT board Monday. David Scorey told the board the Worcester line has lagged significantly in performance behind other lines in the network. Keolis tells us the Worcester line has been impacted by a number of issues, including replacement work and construction around the New Balance facility in Boston, which is reducing trains to a single track. With the construction work and infrastructure improvements that are taking place. Tim Murray says the commuter rail has played a role in Worcester's development. Murray says it is important people have access into Boston from central Massachusetts. And the developers mentioned the fact that we've got rail, 21 round trips, and that's one of the reasons they're here. People getting priced out of the greater Boston area and looking to Metro West and Central Massachusetts as options where to, to live and work and grow a business. So it is important that this gets fixed. For now, passengers like Vanessa Gurmit are hoping things will improve in the near future. We're paying a quite a bit of money to ride these trains back and forth. So I'm just asking, please, figure out something, especially with the bad weather coming. In Worcester, Catherine Andrioli, Worcester News Tonight. A judge has suspended a hearing in the Jeremiah Oliver case to suppress evidence against Alberta Sierra, the boyfriend of Oliver's mother. Alberta Sierra is facing assault and reckless endangerment charges in connection to the boy's death. Five-year-old body was found in a suitcase along Interstate 190 in Sterling in 2014. Earlier this week, the judge ruled that statements Sierra allegedly made to a jailhouse informant did not appear to be relevant to the charges pending against him. Police have made an arrest in connection with the beating death of a 44-year-old woman in Lowell, Massachusetts. The suspect, 23-year-old woman from Worcester, was taken into custody late last night and today was in court for an arraignment. Perry Russom has a look at the charges she is facing. We need I want justice. everybody justice. We got one down. Justice. Four more, five more to go. Oh, Prosecutors say the woman behind the glass, Amarillo Suertas Perez, slammed a liquor bottle over Gloria Bellarengo's head, leaving her to die in a low parking lot. <laughs> Emotions overflowing from the courtroom after loved ones heard of the brutal Saturday night attack that killed a mother of four who has four grandchildren. Prosecutors say the fight happened as they were leaving a party. It's hard for them, for me to hear all the stuff that happened to my mother, for them saying all the injuries she got. Prosecutors say Huertas Perez jumped in a car with a man named Martin Tavares, hitting Orango as she was laying on the ground with the car, then taking off. A state trooper found the two in a stolen car going 130 miles an hour. They crashed into a house and ran away. Prosecutors say the two broke into a nearby hotel, later identified on surveillance video. Huertas Perez made it back to her mother's house in Lowell, and that's where police found her. I want justice. I want all of them. I want the, the boys. I want the girls, the rest, whoever. I want, all the, I want all of them arrested, everybody, even the people that owned the house that she was there. I want all of them. Huertas Perez has been charged with assault and battery with a dangerous weapon. Bail set at $30,000 cash. No word on what happened to the man who was driving the car. In Lowell, Perry Russell, Worcester News.